Time for the finale for the Colorado football season, and they're heading out to Utah, which uh, has has not been an easy place for the Buffs. And you know, Pullman was not an easy place, but um, you know, it's a tough stretch, <laughs> tough two game stretch. I mean, we said uh, near the start of the year when we saw that schedule, like, boy, they better get their six wins uh, before mid November yeah. because it was going to be really difficult. Um, obviously, you know, Pullman didn't go well last week, but um, Salt Lake always a tough place, and uh, the Utes are really, really good at home. They are. It's it's crazy. This is the second preview that I'm mentioning a John Embry arrow win because back in 2011 first year of the conference uh, with Utah and Colorado in it Utah was on uh, was going to win the Pac-12 South had they beaten Colorado in uh, uh, what were they at that point probably two and nine at that point Colorado goes out to Salt Lake City pulls off the upset um, and it was early when they were conference foes those games were always close and then something switched uh, about six, seven years ago to where Utah has blown Colorado Colorado out yeah. on a consistent basis. And those trips to Salt Lake City are starting to be as brutal as those trips to Pullman. Uh, it is one of those teams that does just enough, it seems. And uh, they always have those stout defense alignment in the mm-hmm. trenches. They just reload those groups year after year. And there's nothing flashy really about them. Sometimes they have some really good tight ends like Blythe that stand out. But it's not uh, anything... Uh, that's worth style points but at the end of the day it's kind of like a boa constrictor they slowly suck the life out of you over uh those 60 minutes and it's a good team it's not the best utah team of course cam rising not being healthy has made it tougher for them this year yeah, you know, really, 2016 was the last time the Buffs beat Utah, and since then, every game's been you know kind of a blowout. And really, the, the closest game since then was their last trip to Salt Lake two years ago, uh, 2021, when uh, Utah didn't have a whole lot to play for. And you remember the Buffs kind of, uh, they got, was it a pick six early, or an interception at least, that set them up. And uh, they're kind of in it, and then Utah you know, scores a couple touchdowns, and then Nico Reed gets the uh, the kickoff return for touchdown, and then Utah scores a couple more. I think it ended up like 28 to 13 or something. Something like that. So it wasn't a blowout, but you knew, I mean, there was no doubt throughout the entire game Utah was going to win that game. My point is, Utah doesn't have a whole lot to play for this week either. And this might be the worst Utah team uh, since, you know, 2015 or something like that. I mean, yeah. the seven and four, four and four in the conference. And part of it is they don't have Cam Rising, but you know, they're coming off of a couple of losses in a row mm-hmm. and, and didn't look good at Arizona last week. And I think they've lost four out of five, is it, or three out of four? They're, they're like three that. and four in their last seven games. Yeah. Okay. And I know, yeah, you know, they they blew out Arizona State, but they've had they've sandwiched some losses around that. And so this this is a tough Utah team. They're going bowling. Obviously, they're a very good team. Uh, but if you're ever going to get Utah, this is probably it. I might have made up a player's name too. Is it was there ever a blight? There was Keithy, Brent <laughs> Keithy. Keithy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just made up a player there. Uh, but if it, if it makes my point, then great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have had good tight ends. Yeah. No, this is uh, a game that if Colorado was playing better football, I'd be really tempted to uh, pick them to yeah. upset uh, in this football game. Colorado has been struggling too much to do that. Um, but it should be closer on the scoreboard, I think, than what we witnessed out at Washington State last week. Yeah. And the big question is, okay, is Shadour Sanders going to be healthy? And, and how much does that drastically change a score prediction? Uh, I would think for most people, a pretty sizable change, you know, having Colorado maybe being close in this football game versus being blown out. And I wouldn't say that's an overreaction based on uh, how yeah. talented he is and given how green and inexperienced those other quarterbacks on the roster are. Yeah, well, let's go with the question first off. Should Shadour Sanders play? I've seen a lot of that debate this this week. Um, should he play? And, and um, I'll ask you first. Well, there are injuries where, yeah, you're messed up, but the medical team will assess, okay, you're really not going to do more damage. We're going to have to – I don't know specifically what Shadour is having done mm-hmm. uh, operation-wise after this season. You would imagine with the punishment he's dealt with that – there's going to be some time spent rehabbing um, to get back to full health. If they come back and say that you've kind of, you kind of are what you are, you're going to need this work anyways, and it's not going to get worse, then I say, why not? Go out there, compete with, you know, still Zay Weaver's last game, Jordan Dominic's last game as a buff, Taj Alston, some other guys that have made an impact. Try to go out there and compete. You've got a long off season to get healthy. You do want him healthy for spring ball. Um, assuming there's going to be a new play caller, you want that continuity with those 15 spring practices. So um, if it is something that could get worse, then I would say you probably want to err on the side of caution yeah. and not risk it because you're not going to a bowl game this year and you do want him healthy. But, again, if he gets the clearance – uh, 
there, this is a long off season coming up. Uh, yeah. Allow him to go out there and compete, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you, and I've seen the argument that you don't want to risk, you know, tearing ACL and he's out for the year. I get all that, but that could happen in spring ball. You know, I mean, that could happen in a workout. I don't think you should play fearful of an injury. If that's the case, don't play football, you know, in my opinion. And I know you put yourself in more harm's way because you're going to get hit by guys and, you know, by a, by a very tough Utah team. I get that, but um, I think there's – I think if he, to your point, if he feels fine, or relatively fine, and he wants to play, I think you play him. And um, I think there's value in if they can show well in this game uh, to get rid of that taste. So, I mean, I think it, especially if he doesn't play, but if they get blown out like they did against Pullman and you end the season with two straight like that, I think that can have a negative effect going into the offseason. But if you go out to Salt Lake City – with Shador or even without him, but if you go out there and, and you play a good football game and maybe even win it, I think that can really be a boost going into the offseason. And, you know, as we talked about earlier this week, maybe even helping in some of that recruiting, it might look better to some potential transfers that say, all right, you beat Utah. I mean, you guys are right there. You're knocking on the door. And so um, I think there's value in them playing a good game out there. Yeah, it, it's much easier to have that you are the missing piece conversation. Yes. If you go out to Salt Lake City and win the game or play really competitive football, um, Going back to Shadour, I, I would imagine that they will play him if he, if he's got yeah. that that green light because Travis Hunter was out there way late against Washington yeah. State, so they are willing to play guys um, as long as you know the the medical staff does give that green light. But I, I'm glad that Utah is going to be in the conference with Colorado going yeah. forward, and I think it's going to be a great move for them. I think they go from having a really hard time competing with Oregon and USC and even Washington here late on a year to year basis, but with that pipeline of guys that they bring in in the trenches, they're going to be a force in the Big 12 yeah. going forward. As long as Kyle Whittingham wants to keep coaching, you know, at some point he's probably going to want to retire. But uh, I would think going into next year, they might be the front runner, especially with Cam Rising deciding that he's going to come back. Well, I, I think these two teams could be two of the front runners. I think it'd be an interesting in the in the Big 12 next year. So uh, let's go predictions. And do we go a prediction with Shador and one without? You know, how do we do this? That's probably the best way to go about it. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to have my main prediction be with Shador out there because um, Coach Prime hasn't shut that down. He mentioned that he doesn't work really early in the week anyways. And yeah. so I will, I will probably find out a little bit more as we get closer to game time. For now, I say uh, that the Colorado does hang in there. They show some fight in this last game. This is not the best Utah team that they've had. Um, and so uh, I have them hanging in there, losing this game 34-21. Without Shador, um, you probably – have more issues controlling the clock. Um, I'll go 41 to 10 if he if Shador doesn't play. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm thinking with Shador, uh, I, this is still a better Utah team, and um, it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's still a very good Utah defense. Their offense is not you know real explosive, but the Buffs have been struggling a little bit uh, on defense at times. So I'm going to go 37-20 if Shador plays, um, you know, which is not a great score, but I think that uh, a 17-point loss out there is not brutal. Um, you know, and then if he doesn't play, I'm along the same lines as you. I, I'll, I'll even go you know 42 to. 42 to 10 since you said 41 10 okay. I'll, I'll say they hit the extra point uh, but yeah I, I think if he doesn't play I think it's a much different football game it's just we saw it last week they're a different football team if he doesn't play and it was kind of the fear that everybody had going into the season like what happens if Shadur can't play we saw it last week and it wasn't pretty uh, they've got to you know get better at the backup quarterback spot yeah. in the offseason whether it's Ryan Staub and you know Casey Wiseman or whatever getting better Gavin Cold or finding somebody different but uh, you know that's clearly a weakness that you don't want you, you don't want to be exposed very often what it was last week yeah and I think Antoine Hill is going to be a really good quarterback if he sticks with that commitment yeah. comes in here um, and we, we don't know if there's a possibility of maybe him reclassifying because it is going to be just so challenging once again this coming offseason to try to bring in a, a backup quarterback those guys that are quality quarterbacks want to go somewhere and play and so that yeah. uh I know that they tried uh <laughs> from talking with sources this past offseason and it just you you at a certain point, you got to go. Okay, they're just not coming, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, and try to build up the young guys. But yeah, that that is probably I would say outside of outside line, our offensive line linebacker, and then maybe backup quarterback as as a big concern going into 2024. Yeah, well, we've got so much time oh, yeah. to talk about all that stuff. We're gonna be back after we eat all the turkey and everything after the game, and we'll talk about it.